Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another beer review. So last time, last video we did um, the Dutchy Golden Ale by Waitrose, branded as from Waitrose and it was brewed by the, the Witchwood Brewery in uh, West Oxfordshire. So yes, it wasn't, wasn't so good. So hopefully this time we've got a better one. Again, all these beers were bought. There were six beers bought in the same day, and uh, they all kind of meet the criteria of uh, being brewed in the kind of southwest of of England. Um, we will obviously be starting to do other beers and other breweries throughout the UK, but let's start off in the southwest and just keep working our way along because there is so many good breweries and good beers out there up and down the UK and we've got to try them haven't we? We've got to try them, we've got to see what they're like. I hope to God they're better than the Dutchy <laughs> um, Golden Ale from, from Waitrose which, I, which I'm sure a lot of them probably are. But yes, today we're going to be doing a different beer and the beer we're going to be doing is uh, Exmoor Gold. Now Exmoor is based in uh, Taunton. I don't know if that's really shown particularly well, but uh, anyway, um, it's an Exmoor Gold Ale. It's uh, from Taunton, and uh, there is some spiel that comes with it, and I've written it down because I know you really want to hear it. Uh, hopefully somebody does, but anyway, it's marketing waffle as you. So, Exmoor, I keep saying Exmouth, but Exmoor Gold from Taunton. From the Exmoor Brewery. So Exmoor Gold is the colour of Chardonnay. Is that important? I mean if it's nice and clear I think a lot of people like clear beer and everything else. So yes, uh, maybe maybe that's a good thing but Chardonnay is a, a very light coloured kind of, uh, well it's not gold is it? It's kind of pale, it's kind of uh, how would you say, kind of straw colour isn't it really, light straw colour, faded straw colour really, it's Chardonnay. Um, sparkling in the glass and appealing to the both ale drinkers and the lager lovers. Oh, so it's, now, it's, it's going to try and bridge the gap between the ale drinkers and the lager drinkers. Although you find most people will drink both based on the thing of what they really fancy and Probably what the weather's like. I mean, I've got to admit, I do like ales and darker beers in winter, but in summer, let's be totally honest, a nice ice cold lager is refreshing just to kind of make you feel better, cool you down, all that kind of stuff. Refresh you. So, yes, so this is kind of trying to bridge the gap. It's trying to be all things to all men. It's never a good idea, but yeah, it could be surprisingly good. We don't know. Um, gold knot. So part of the thing, gold not only looks good, but it also tastes great. I think they're referring to the beer, well hopefully, um, just when they say gold not only um, looks good, but tastes good. <laughs> I've never really eaten gold, but anyway, <laughs> I presume they're referring to the, but yes. Okay, right. Um, they all say it tastes great. I, I've never seen a beer saying, oh, it's not, not, not so good. Mediocre, uh, bloody awful. You mean they always say it tastes good, you know, that type of thing. So, and it's apparently the tasting flavours are with fresh and fruity flavours. Fresh and fruity ale and lager. It seems to be another thing. What the heck does fresh taste like? I don't understand. I, I, it's one of the things that really annoys me. What the hell does fresh taste like? That tastes fresh. It's bollocks, it's rubbish, it just doesn't. Don't get me started. And soft. And comforting multi center. <laughs> it's just, it's just buzzwords, really. <laughs> what the hell does soft taste like? So it tastes great with a fresh and fruity flavours and a soft and comforting multi center. I don't know what a multi center is. I really, honestly, really don't know. And beer. I mean, you can get multi flavours, but I don't know what the hell a multi centre is. It's just rubbish and bollocks again. 
and soft. What the hell does soft taste like? That that's a new one on me. Oh, it tastes soft. Oh, that tastes like a pillow. Oh, what the hell? Seriously. But anyway, apparently the aroma is supposed to be fresh, grassy, and florally hop, with a subtle, soft caramel tinged maltiness. So it's going to be kind of like obviously the kind of maltiness, the biscuitness, as people like to refer to it as. Um, it's going to have little hints of caramel, not strong caramel, just tinged apparently. And uh, it's going to be fresh and grassy with a floral hop. So it's a floral hop, not more of a, a kind of bittery hop. Okay. The palate is balanced of gentle grainy maltiness with a sprightly floral, citrusy fresh hop fruitness. The finish is bittersweet with hints of citrus fruit weaving in and out. It's a very complex drink by the sounds of it. My God, there's a hell of a lot going on going by that. So basically, let's let's cover this. As a part, as a balance of gentle, grainy maltiness with a sprightly floral, citrusy, fresh hop fruitness. The hops are doing a hell of a lot of work there aren't they? they're providing all all manner of flavors all together and of course hey, you can identify every single one perfectly it doesn't make actually make any sense floral citrusy fruitiness well is citrus not a fruit i'm mean, sorry but is orange and lemon not a fruit okay but apparently they're now identifying with citrus and fruity okay and it's floral as well. So there's floralness, there's citrusness, and there's fruitiness. My God. And of course, it's also bitter and sweet. With hints of citrus fruit again, weaving in and out. So you get citrus twice. Not only do you get citrus, but you get citrus in and out. So we'll find out with that. And of course, the hops being used are Challenger, Goldings, and Fuggles. There we go. Now the ABV, it's 5% alcohol. It comes in a... 500 ml bottle, there's a bugger, and the price is £1.85 as of the 5th of February when I bought it, yes, was the 5th, yeah, and uh, from Waitrose, so I bought it from Waitrose, so the first beer we reviewed was the Waitrose own beer, which was the more expensive one, at £2.10, and this one is £1.85, it hasn't won any awards, Maybe because we haven't put them in. So it doesn't mean it's a case because it has got no awards. It means it, it's a, a bad beer. It just basically means it might not have been entered into any of these kind of uh, award kind of uh, systems. But anyway, let's crack it open and uh, see what it's like. There's a few different ones within this. There's a bit stag and quite a few other different ones which we will be trying as well. But this is a nice little starter, the Exmoor Gold. Let's crack it open and see what it smells like. There we go. Let's see it. There is a kind of fresh looking kind of mown grass kind of smell. Grassy kind of hay. Can you smell? Let's have a look to see how it pours. There's a glass. Oh, there's a beauty. Oh, it's quite a lively carbonation. Oh, it's only Billy on the glass. I'm doing that. Right, anyway. Chardonnay? My arse. If I poured out a glass of Chardonnay for anybody that was that colour, the first of the thing they'd be asking was, where the hell did you get that bottle? So, Chardonnay, I wouldn't say so. I think you're kind of pushing it that way. Yeah. But it is quite a lighter looking kind of ale. Again, you're not really smelling very much. You're really just getting the kind of freshy kind of grassy. You're not getting any maltiness or biscuits or, or anything, you just... For all these kind of flavours and aromas and that, I'm only picking up one from the actual kind of uh, the aroma or the smell of the beer, the fragrance. 
So it's got a hell of a lot to do in the flavour front to try and kind of match in with all these tasting notes. It's, I mean, it's, it's tremendous, uh, all these flavours in the one bottle. Right, well, let's give it a go. Right, I'm not starting off with uh, uh, hmm. So apparently the aroma is a blend of fresh grassiness, in that case we've got the grassiness, right, so that's the floral, no it's not there in the smell, and a subtle soft caramel tinged maltiness. No, not getting that. So, out of all these things for the actual kind of the, the kind of the aroma of the beer, I'm only getting one. And my nose isn't blocked. No. Ah, tasting nose. Right. It's gentle grainy maltiness. No, well, that's not there. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, sprightly floral. There is a little hint of floralness uh, on the tip of the tongue, but I would have said that the the waitrose, the last one we reviewed, had a, had more of a floral flavour, and that wasn't really florally at all. I did say that. Yes, there was a kind of a a soft floralness, a kind of a hint of floral. This is this is less than that. So when they're saying it's a sprightly floral. No. Citrusy? Not really at all, no. In fact I wouldn't put that in one of my kind of a uh, flavour profiles for this beer. Just no, citrusy just isn't there. Fruitiness? No. What I would say is a lager. Kind of a, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of lagginess to it. There is maltiness to it. A kind of, but not a strong maltiness to it. But of course more malty, more kind of biscuit than you would get in a lager but not what you would call a strong biscuit or malty flavour for a meal. So it's more malty than a lager, but a lot less than a standard ale. Fruitiness, I'm not picking up any fruitiness at all. I'm picking up that kind of uh, bitter aftertaste. I'm not getting the sweet, bitter sweet aftertaste. I'm just getting a kind of slightly bitter aftertaste that you would get with some lagers. Um, but you're not getting anything that you would get like from Pilsner's, that kind of sweetness or anything. You're not getting any of that. It's a strange one. It's got more flavour than a lager, but lacking a lot of flavour of a good ale. That is, I can see. That I can see why they're thinking it's kind of a. How do they put it? Um, appealing to both ale drinkers and lager lovers. Well, if you're looking for something more flavour than a standard lager, then yeah, I would probably say yes. It's got more flavour and more depth than a standard lager. Does it have the crispness of a lager though? A bit. But not a lot. It does have that softness of an ale. It doesn't have that kind of harsh crispness, but it does give you that little kind of crisp, bitter aftertaste that you get from a lager. So that is actually more accurate. It is more accurate. It is kind of somewhere between a lager and an ale. So it's a kind of very strong kind of uh, flavoured lager, but a very weak flavoured kind of ale. Would I prefer this over a lager? Maybe, 
but not to start off with. I wouldn't start an evening drinking this. If it was at a barbecue in the summer, then, and it's warm and things like that, then yes, maybe the first couple just to kind of settle everything down, get rid of your kind of uh, thirst, maybe refresh yourself, that type of stuff. You know, if it's a hot day, the first couple of beers you're going to drink probably quite quickly. So there's no point in drinking something with strong strong flavours. You want a kind of lighter, cool laggers, boom, just to kind of cool you down and add that kind of refreshment to you. But yes, I was still going to be having, like, say, a, a lager with food, like burgers or things like that from a barbecue, then this might be better because it's more robust. It would stand up to stronger flavours than, say, um, a standard lager would. And yes, it'd be nice maybe to kind of carry on, because I don't think you would feel that kind of watery sensation, you know, when you're drinking lots of lager. You just, after a while, you just, it's fluid. You just don't taste anything. It just becomes, you become numb to whatever flavour it really had to start with. And you become, become acclimatised and you just, it's, you, you're just drinking fluid, foamy, foamy water really, in a lot of ways. This one has more to it than that, which makes it interesting. But if you're looking from an ale, it's not interesting. But if you're looking from a lager point of view, it is quite interesting because there's more to it, it's more complex. So it's an interesting one. It, it's something different and yeah, there's nothing wrong with different. So yeah, taking it from that point of view, if they hadn't mentioned lager, then I would have probably marked it down as a kind of a, a very kind of poor flavoured ale, but it is a more kind of interesting flavoured kind of lager-esque, so it is a kind of mixture, it is, I would say, more lager-like, but with hints of ale to it, rather than ale with hints of lager because again you couldn't really get the hints of lager because it was a standard ale has more flavour profiles so you really wouldn't pick out the kind of lager flavours because lager flavours are more subtle apart from the kind of crispness and the kind of bitterness you get at the back but yes what would I say about it would I, would I buy it again I would I wouldn't buy it in the middle of winter and I wouldn't buy it as a kind of a session kind of drink um, kind of in the house but yes it's an interesting one I would say to pull out at barbecues or to take along for later on at barbecues or or if you're kind of in the summer you know drinking outside with friends and things like that that's if we ever get the chance to do that with lockdown and restrictions and that but hopefully maybe one day we will be able to do that and yeah, I think that would be at home in a kind of outside summer evening environment, either with food or even without food. I think even just with kind of finger snacks and things like that, that would be quite good. So yes, it's more interesting than lager. And if I was going for a lager, I would maybe consider this. So yes, I would buy it again. Would I recommend it to use? Yes, from a, a lager perspective, but not from an ale perspective, even though they've called it a golden ale. We've already said there's a lot of flavour profiles that's been listed that just aren't there, same with the aromas and that type of stuff. But there is enough there to make a very interesting kind of alternative to standard laggers. Right, um, the Untapped app is giving it a 3.42 out of 5. Now what would I score it? Right, if I took it as a nail, And I'm going to score it two ways. I'm going to score it as a lag and I'm going to score it as a an ale. As an ale, out of five, I'd maybe give it a two. It's nothing special. There's not enough flavour profiles. In fact, it, it's quite poor from an ale point of view. But from a lag point of view, I could see where they're going from with the 3.5, 3.42, 3 3.5. And I would probably give it maybe... A 3.5, maybe to a 3.7, because it is something unusual, it is something different. So yeah, interesting from that point of view. 
but yes it, it does sound more connection has a more of a connection with lager than it does with ale and uh, even by the colour it's maybe slightly more lager-esque than ale but yeah from an ale point of view it's not very good it's a two so if you're really on an ale drink and you're not really into lagers then I would avoid it if you're into laggers and you want something with a bit more depth or something a bit more interesting, then yes, I would recommend it and I would probably give it maybe a 3.5 to 3.7. It's that kind of range. And that's a good thing. So, yeah. Exmoor Gold from the Taunton Brewery. They've actually brewed something quite interesting. What I would say is you've got to get past the, the marketing kind of bump and waffle because... I mean, there were so many things that was listed there. I was like just going through ticking boxes and there were so many things I could dispel because the flavours just aren't there. I don't know what the heck they were talking about. I mean, it makes you wonder that from what they were describing, have they ever drunk it? Have they ever tasted it? Because whoever wrote that certainly hadn't tasted it. So I don't know what the hell's going on. But anyway, an interesting kind of drink from a lager point of view, a disappointing drink from an ale point of view. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that review. Um, we will be having another one soon. There is something that's going to be coming up a bit, well, hopefully quite soon, it just depends when it arrives, but we're going to do a little bit of home brewing. So we've got some kit coming for that, but it's going to be a more kind of easier, kind of at home, kind of home brewing, and we'll try some experimentation. I mean, it's all right sitting here drinking beer and giving your opinion and review, but let's put your money where your mouth is and can you do any better? The difference is I also do have a bit of a background with um, brewing, again more to do with distillation and uh, whiskey production and everything else, but we have brewed lots of different types of alcohol over the years and uh, yes, the kind of beer brewing process, quite experienced that, not just by myself but also with the, the family as well the strong history of it so we'll be doing that as well bringing that it's going to be a new feature but we'll discuss it more once the actual i have the items in and i can actually show you them but that's something that's coming up and uh, hopefully you might enjoy so the next one we're going to be doing just before i sign off is going to be the butcombe gold bitter now we did do another butcombe previously in the range but this is going to be another bitter because they do quite a lot of bitters but them and uh, this of course is from Bridgewater and uh, just kind of looking at what my notes I've got here because I've got them for, for the, the next one we're going to do interesting that's all I'm going to say interesting but anyway thank you for watching go and try this beer you might find it interesting you might find it crap <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's different, but yeah, go and try it. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.